Well, Adette, thank you so much for taking some time to hang with me today. I appreciate it. Yeah. I also appreciate that invitation and the patience to wait, finally. Uh, we finally connected. And uh, for those listeners who listen to many of our episodes, you'll probably notice a little bit different uh, tone in my voice. I'm actually in my truck um, because schedules were kind of a good, bit crazy, but I didn't want to reschedule with the debt. So my very first podcast from the truck. So uh, anyway, here we go. Um, Adet, you um, you have a unique uh, story. I want to hear about it. How did you get into coaching? You have you have been coaching and certifying other coaches for quite some time now. But tell me a little bit about your background and how did you get into coaching yourself? So I've been a coach for over three years right now. So if you may consider it, I'm a newbie because technically, you know, people in my industry would consider a senior if you've been here in the industry for 10 years. But under my belt, um, I'm, I'm blessed to have certified 310 uh, fellow coaches from the Philippines right now. So I get into coaching over five, about five years ago, I started this endeavor. I had this project, Timothy. So I was in the corporate world. I, I was a um, senior marketing uh, personnel in a corporate world, a distribution company. And um, I'm attending a church. And one time, I kind of realized that there's a lot of people in the church, young people, younger than me. I'm 49, okay, turning 49. Younger, like in my 30s, late 20s, who's got a lot of energy and they would follow you and support you with all your activities in the church right you got it and then i'm thinking how can i help them get to where i am because now i'm a senior executive how can i help them um achieve what i have achieved so i've been praying about it uh david for quite some time until one day there was this um, recognition day, awarding day in, in my uh, my daughter's uh, school, and she got the hashtag Timothy Award. And while the award, it was a surprise because it, it was an academic award, ding, and then there was like a surprise, and she was given the Timothy Award. And the Timothy Award, while uh, they were explaining it, it's something, it's given to someone who's being raised to the next, like the Timothy of Paul. And when they were discussing it, I realized this is what I wanted to do with the girls. So just so, to, just to jump, it. I just want to make sure I want to jump in here because you're saying the word Timothy. And yes. for those who are not familiar with the Bible, um, Timothy mm -hmm. was kind of a protege or a uh, mentee underneath the Apostle Paul. Yes, that's right. And so, that's and so right. this concept, especially in the Christian world, this idea of being a Timothy is one who's learning, who's growing, who's being raised up to the next level. So what you're saying yes. is she got this award, award of being a Timothy of somebody who's yes. being raised up to the next level. So that gave you yes. a vision for what? The girls who's following me in the church. Because I was thinking, why would they just follow? Why would they follow what I do if I cannot help them ra race to the next level? And I mm -hmm. don't know what to do. Although I'm a discipleship leader in the church, I'm thinking that my core expertise is the corporate world. So how can I raise them up to the next level? So yeah. I launched the Timothy Project, and what I told them is, uh, every single week I would show up and train them in different areas apart from discipleship. So like mm -hmm. anything, marketing, writing, teaching, whatever it is that's outside the church, I will show up every single week and teach them and come whoever is available. Mm -hmm. So it took us a, a year doing that until one of the girls heard of my vision of building up a coffee shop, which is Decap Coffee Republic. That was a vision that was about a decade. In my journal. Really? So, really? so it was so long. And what I wanted in the coffee shop is not your typical coffee shop, but a coffee, a place where you it will be a place of refuge. Remember, Christian people, with the church is not open uh seven days a week. I'm, I'm a born Catholic. So in the Catholic, there's a church that you go, that's just a tabernacle. And when we became Christian, the, the the concern is the my concern was where do I go when the church is closed? Okay, so that's the only question. And I've been praying about it and had got this vision of a place. It looks like a coffee shop where there's a lot of books, you know, somebody co con connecting with you, talking with you and all. I had that. It was a beautiful thing. So I wrote it in a notebook, in a journal, keep it. 
say thank you. It's so big. I don't know how I, I get it. So one of the conversations with the girls, I mentioned that and she got so excited. You know, the youngsters, when they're so excited, okay, the millennials, they're so excited. So she told everybody and the next thing I know, the next meeting, they said, let's talk about the coffee shop. Wow. So fast forward, after a year, we built the coffee shop. And, and the coffee D shop, D cup, D cup, yeah, D coffee cup republic. republic. So D, yeah, D apostrophe C U P cup, uh, coffee republic. So the cup means my portion. Okay, so God is our portion. Nehemiah, uh, Nehemiah principle, but it's really coming from uh, some. Okay, so we're building it like Nehemiah, but we're building. Uh, we're thinking that what God have given us is our portion. Mm, so that's okay. Uh, okay that, that's the thing. So, so you open this coffee shop, and it's been open how long now? Uh, this is now our fifth year. Fifth year, and what did you do during okay. now? Well, first of all, tell us what because this is a unique coffee shop, and yes. I want to hear how what happened during the pandemic because you guys got hit hard. You're still getting hit hard in the Philippines. That's the thing, David, because right after three years of being in operations in the first place, okay, we were not able to renew the contract because the owner wants to use it. So we built the second place. We inaugurated it in less than a month, pandemic hits. No way. That's it. So we did, and we were so excited for the second place because finally the second place will be 24 hours because this is no longer inside one building and because we are now operating as a coaching hub. So we were so excited that we, we will be able to receive, help a lot of people 24 by 7. I'm an advocate of mental health. So I said, wow, finally, guess what? We didn't even get to operate for one month. And you yeah, have a meeting in, space. I have yeah, a, we, I have, have... I, we have a we have a, a function hall. So there are people who goes there and rent it for a church, and I regularly conduct my coaching classes in there. So we we've got a lot in that space, and we opened February two, so zero two zero two twenty. It was a wow. beautiful date, and then less than a month, shutdown. Boom. But we didn't get to shut down, so we were able to operate. Um, like nine hours, 12 hours, we sustain, David, mm -hmm. even without customers. Because we want the place to be the lamp post. We want it to be the lighthouse. So like mm -hmm. the whole city was dark, but we asked the owner of the building if they can allow us to operate. Even at night, we keep it alive. So we've been sustaining it for over a year now. And when pandemic hits, we were doing 24 by 7 uh, live coverage. You can see it in Facebook. Uh, we've got like, we connect with people. Uh, we ask people how things and everything. We connect with our coaches, with different people in the industry. So we've been doing that for months when the pandemic hits. So we were operating still 24 by 7, but without the customers. Yeah, and even That's now, we're, we're recording this in mid-May 2021, and you guys are still on, in lockdown. Very much, very much in lockdown, but we're still very much operating. And we're still continuing providing coaching classes and services and all to people, even now that people needs us. So we've got a different model. And if you notice without coaching, so I, I used to uh, I used to do counseling in the church. But now if I have a coffee shop, I can't bring that. Like what I'm doing in the church, I can't do that in my own coffee shop. So what I started doing is doing FB Live and talk people about, you know, I, I've been teaching some, I've been teaching about Proverbs, but it's not really, a, you know, it's not a strong model, David. So mm -hmm. I've been praying uh, what to do. And this is no joke. It was just whispered to me. I just heard life coaching, a real thing, no joke. And I researched about it. In the church, I was called a coaching um, a discipleship coach. Mm -hmm. So, but it's a different thing when you look at life coaching. It's a different animal. It's a different perspective. It's a different practice. So I got certified. So I'm from the Philippines. I got certified from an institute that is based in San Diego. So um, I'm blessed. I'm super blessed with the institute. And then right after certification, I am blessed to had to to had receive multiple inquiries and clients. 
and that's when I realized I can't do it alone and I want mm. it to sh be shared with my countrymen. And I have a very strong belief. I'm a graduate of economics. And when I was looking at the globe, I was looking at the perspective, the market, I saw that truly life coaching can end poverty. And it can also help in discipleship. Because now I will not I don't even have to force people listen to the gospel and da 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 da, but I can help them see their calling their values in life, their own design. And if they're hurting, I don't even have to tell them that you know just surrender it to Christ, but this time surrender it to Christ and there's going to be a process. So mm -hmm. that's where I started um, wanting to bring life coaching in the Philippines. So the next thing I did was to connect with the person, with the institute who um, certified me. But they said no. They said no because they had a bad experience with another country. And I had a mistake because by the time I was also coordinating with another institute who said yes. So I got a yes. And the rest is history. For over three years, we were able to certify 306 students under that institute. Even including pandemic, we hit the numbers. Amazing. So, amazing. And... Uh, I, when I met you, okay, when I met you a couple of months back, I mean, a month over a month, there was just like, um, there was a sudden shift in business, decisions, and everything. And right now, I am doing the certification program on my own. I just launched my first class with over 55 students. Wow. Yeah. And I'm, I'm running my second line now. And my offering is more extensive because now this is a 21 days journey um, via uh, learning management system. And then I brace the student to three day coaching bootcamp and another three day business bootcamp. So it means that right after the program, you're ready to soar, you're ready to thrive, and you're ready to to become a coaching entrepreneur, not just okay. a coaching practitioner. Okay, let me uh, let me understand this. So your certification process is 21 days. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah. Okay, yes. 21 drip days. Content. And is that a drip Online. campaign? Online. Yeah, so the, they, a drip so content. They... So there's learning management system. There's an, a yes. learning management system. And yes. every single day you receive a training. Okay, great. So they get that training over the course of 21 days. And then after that, there's a three day, all day boot camp on, uh, on coaching. coaching. Is that right? Yeah. And then another um, three days on kind of entrepreneurship, like how to actually run your business. Okay. Actually, is what happened right? is, yes, that's actually right. So 21 days plus three days, uh, business boot camp and 21 days coaching boot camp. So you're ready oh, to start. 20, 21 days for the coaching boot camp or three days? Uh, 21 days, uh, sorry, 21 days for the learning management system, okay, yes. for the concepts. And yes. then you have three days uh, live, it's live yes. uh, there, live coaching okay. bootcamp, and there are three mm -hmm. days live business bootcamp. Okay, all right. And that's, this is your new program, and yes. you've got 55 people enrolled in that right now, getting certified. They're done. They're done. Finished. They just finished. Yeah. Wow. They that just is finished. amazing. Okay. Now they're the done. 21 days, they can do that while they have another job and then they're doing this yes. simultaneously in the evenings or whatever. Yeah. Uh, you will only take around 30 minutes to one hour max to, to learn okay. and then do the, do the, the exercise. It's okay. easy. Now, would you say, cause when I, when I hear that, um, I go, well, that's not, that's not a very long time to be certified as a life, as a life coach. You know what I mean? 21 yeah. days, three days, three days. Um, mm -hmm. Do you, you feel like they are fully qualified to help somebody like take that next step to start getting clients? Yes. Yes. Um, in fact, David, some people would do coaching without training, formal training. The last certification I, uh, I was handling was two days program. This one is even longer. Now, the, 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 the key here is because right after certification, I provide a continuous support. Like after that, they are free to join my membership site for one month where they are provided all the toolkits, all the resources, all the presentation materials. It's there, ready to roll. Nice, nice. Ready, even coaching and, plan. And all of these, um, it seems like the individuals who join this are primarily women. Is that correct? Yes, primarily women. Absolutely. So we're mm -hmm. calling on the man. Hello. 
<laughs> but um, that's such an empowerment to women in the Philippines because, mm-hmm. I mean, I don't want to paint a broad brushstroke here, but I do know that that seems like that would be a very empowering thing for women to be able to do, right? Yes, yes. Um, the thing there, David, you know that women are super, super women, like super mom, super mom. Like they're all over the place. They do sure. a lot of things. And oftentimes they crush themselves in the process. Mm. And the reason why I'm fighting for life coaching for women, even if they don't do this full time, even if they don't, like after certification, there are three ways, pathways for you. You can be um, self-growth coach. Okay. So what does it mean? If it's a self-growth coach, it means that you are using the profession for yourself and for your family. Mm -hmm. Okay. You can become a part-time coach. It means that you're doing it on a sideline and you can also do a full-time. But, you know, being a self-help growth coach, however you call it, but it means that it's just you. All right. It's already an impact to your mental health, to your physical health, to your family, to your relationship. So mm-hmm. to me, that's immediately the empowerment that every woman needs to have. Yes. Yes. Okay. Now, uh, is your program a Christian program or is it open to anybody? It's open to everyone. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's open to everyone because I believe that God do not disqualify anyone. His love is for mm-hmm. everyone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And now, I uh, don't put, I'm um, sorry, I don't put any scriptures in there. All right. But. Uh, I ab- uphold the Christian's principles. Mm-hmm. Now, would you be open to people participating in your program outside of the Philippines? Or is it, I, is, I is have it in one. English? It's purely English. And I have, um, in the past certifications, I have people from different parts of the globe. And mm-hmm. so right now, we got different um, inquiries right now. Uh, and now it's even be- better, David, because they can do it um, on their own time. And they only have to allocate this time, three days, to learn this life. Um, and they can also have their own uh, moment to plan ahead. Mm-hmm. Right? And mm-hmm. if they come to the certification, uh, to the boot camp, prepared. Because they already have the 20, the knowledge within uh, the drip content, the content online. So they come in ready. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And what is the cost? What's the cost for your program right now? It's a uh, it's a one thousand US dollar, so that's a fifty thousand pesos right mm-hmm. now, based on present conversion. So that's a pretty sh- that's a pretty um, big investment for people in the Philippines, based on what I know. That's a pretty strong investment. Yeah, but would you see? Would you believe that the past certification I had of two days is also the same amount, nine hundred ninety nine US dollar? Mm-hmm. That's so the they've got to be serious. They've got to be serious about this if they're going to invest that kind of money. I I like what you said. I agree with what you said. Exactly the point, David. Mm -hmm. Uh, The certification program that we're offering is not for everyone. What does it mean? It means that this is for people who truly wants to embark on a journey of becoming a certified professional life coach and will truly uphold the techniques, the approach, the principle, and would really be a life coach uh, for their family, for their community, for their church, and can really get this as an income stream for them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do so you... this is not your typical $10, $20 from of the course. institutions. Of course. Do you believe that everyone could be a life coach or is a life coaching really for a certain type of person? I would say that Life coaching is a learnable skill, and like any skill, you need to have the heart to learn. It's a posture mm-hmm. of the heart, David. Yeah. Because when you do coaching, right before you is a person that will trust you. And the way I see coaching is an opportunity for you to host. Host a safe mental space. At that moment in time, that person is trusting you with the way they think, the way they feel, the way they will respond to you. So you need to be able to hold that safely 
and the person feels safe with you. That's why it takes training, it takes commitment and dedication. And what about if the person is not lovable enough? Remember those people who, you know, they come in mad, arrogant, because they're going through something. So it takes that heart to see that the person is capable of becoming better than where he or she at that moment in time. And that's the value of the profession, David. Mm -hmm. Now, in the United States, life, there are a lot of there are a lot of life coaches in the United States, yeah. and yeah. the because there's not a, necessarily a certification regulation. process regulation, okay. right? Anybody yes. can kind of jump in. How are life coaches viewed in the Philippines? Um, generally speaking i would say not only in the philippines but globally right there is this um doubt okay there's this doubt can you perform especially i'll be straight there are organizations who offer life coaching for one peso one peso okay mm -hmm. they would say 100 pesos and you become a coach as a master coach or you get to another institute for ten dollars you become a coach or some will not even go to any training or certification and will present themselves as a coach and what happened would be these people would have an experience with this kind of coach and they will feel bad this is common this is common. Mm -hmm. And I understood that very well from the very beginning I started. And so the strategy here is to teach, to educate, to show up every single day, and to provide value so that people see that you are real for real. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That, that, that's a strategy. I noticed that the the individuals who have gone through your program online they refer to them as coach so and so like whatever their name is um yes. or master coach uh so and Get so it. and so okay. that's that's different than the united states people don't necessarily do that they might say uh their name and then certified you know, life or business coach, they might say that after their name and like a little byline or whatever. But I'm noticing that you really put an emphasis on them using that word coach in front of their name on social media and so forth. Why do you do that? Because we live to that standard, because we want to remind ourselves that that is a responsibility, that we are standing to be responsible for that name. So I, 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 I know what you're saying, like right after the name, you put the CLC, Certified Life Coach, right? So it has no bearing to me because that's just an additional to your, to your name. Like, for example, for me, when you say Master Coach A, it's not just a name to me. For me, I'm saying I'm here. You can be comfortable. You can be assured. You can be at peace that someone here can come up to you if you need help. It's just like having a surgeon on board, like just having, mm. you know, a medical professional on board. Mm -hmm. You are a hardcore person. I mean, you are like a lot of times the life coaching, you know, people that I'm around, they're a little, you know, kind of soft and a little kind of, they're just, I don't know. You're hardcore. Like you kick butt. Wait, well, yeah, this is amazing. I, yeah, I am. I am. I am. Yeah, really. Because. I might have just one chance of a lifetime to make that person know that change is possible. Mm. But not everybody, David, would be given an opportunity to do what I do. And it's a gift from God. It's a calling. Like what you do is a calling. Not easy. That's hard. But every single day, if I would be given one more chance to speak with someone and breathe life to that life that seems to be dying, losing, all right? Um, why would I not do that? I mean, look, somebody who's dying, somebody's having this mental health issues, somebody breaking off with a relationship and you come in soft. Do you really think they'll listen to you? Do, do you really think they will be safe with you? I don't think so. I think they want somebody who would just like have that voice and say, hey, let's do this together. You can make it. It's possible, all right? Your husband left you for another woman. What do you want to happen now? 
All right. You, you got retrenched. You lost your job. What do you want to do that? All right. Everybody doesn't believe that you can do it, but you got passions to do. Like you're passionate about this business. You're passionate about that. What can we do? What would you like to do? Let's make it happen. I think that's Love the that. tone of voice that you you want to hear, David. I think. Somebody who believes in you and is just passionate about you and your future. Yeah. And I walk mm -hmm. the talk. I walk the talk. I am that every single day, every single day. And I show up every single day without fail, even during pandemic. Until today, I haven't taken a break. Every single day, you sh I show up, I make posts, I go live, I, uh, I'm all over the place. Not for, not for popularity, not for advertisement, David. I just have one life to live. I'm very clear mm -hmm. with that. Tomorrow mm -hmm. may never come for me. I want to mm -hmm. take this moment. Mm -hmm. yeah. How do you stay rejuvenated you know how do you stay refreshed passion purpose core values that is aligned with my faith i'm very clear with that i'm on a mission field this is a mission field david there's no point for me to just you know go weary or go weak on this and god has been very very gracious very gracious it's it's him actually Mm -hmm. That's where it's coming from. Now, I know you're uh, you're married and you have kids that are m more of the adult age. Um, and I think they're participating with you in your business, your organization and business. Yeah. Tell me about how they support you. What does your husband think about all this? What was he thinking when you transitioned out of your corporate career? You're opening a coffee shop. Oh, my goodness. Was he thinking you were crazy? He was. Um. I remember when when we were about to open because we signed up the contract and never he never been to the place and the place was three hundred square meter and it was very expensive and then almost close to the finish of the constructions he went he came over and he saw how big it is he saw and he started asking the people how much is this because normally he, he never asks you know at home I'm a wife he's a husband we don't we don't talk about these things but he knows I quit and all he, he knows what you and he get to find out all the costing and I could not forget David he went to me right there he said you're ready for this aren't you I said obviously he said you better be ready this is not a game I said I am and I said just relax i'll pull this through yeah and i did and i did yeah he got four like he never felt i think he never felt so scared about my decisions until i opened the cup coffee republic that was the mm. first time that was the first time so he's so scared and then when i landed into life coaching the, the thing here is when i decided to become a life coach david i stopped being a consultant why? Because I wanted to perfect my education in life coaching. Because it's going to be difficult. I've been a consultant for two decades. So I needed time to focus on my coaching. So imagine new business and then turning away from what, you know, makes money. So that's so scary for him. But he just allowed me. And so I'm grateful for that. After some time, I think over a year, he joined the profession. He also became a coach. But, okay, he put all, whatever love and he understood what life is, he put now to the practice and finally breathing life to his long lost dream, childhood dream of becoming an artist. So now he's painting. Yeah. Uh, and never been that. And he, he got it when he went through the certifications and realized that there's more to life. So he finally dived into this. Hmm. We've got three children. My youngest is 17. She's the only girl in the family. And she's the one in charge of all these technicals. She's set up everything for me. She, all the people going live is all about her. 17-year-old. Nice. And I have a 20, 19-year-old turning 20. He's the one studying um, psychology. And the eldest is 25, is the one in the website, is the one, all, all of this thing. Um, so it's a family thing for us. That is amazing. We're all in here. Yeah. Yeah, all making it happen. Wow. Yes. And you, you have an intense following. You know, I see these uh, women yeah. who have gone through your program and they really revere you. 
And I think part of that is cultural because um, I think there's probably in the Philippines a bit more of a respect for one's you know, elders or respect for someone who's above you or has more Mm -hmm. experience than you in the United States. I think it's a little, you know, quite a bit less than where people, there's a lack of respect of that kind of deal. But I mean, you have a strong following. Do you, do you ask for that following? Do you ask for them to, you know, kind of do certain things or do they just voluntarily jump in and they're, help me understand that a bit. When I started my profession, David, I only have one dream and prayer. I have one focal, like this thing. I need to build 10 super fans. 10 super fans. Uh, People who will follow me, believe in me, subscribe to what I say, and will give me real feedback. Real thing. Mm. That's all I I, I want. 10 people. And I believe I cracked the code in doing that because these women who are really women who's been with me, following me, which I got it also in the church, right? And even when I started my coaching, uh, see that I live the way I teach and Mm -hmm. talk. So like Mm -hmm. I have no double, triple personality. I'm like this, like wherever you see me, it's, it's me. Like this me. I, I talk to my children like this. I talk to you like this. I I you you invite me with another conference, you'll hear the same voice. So um and I think that the thing here, David, is I'm not scared to tell per, a person to tell you straight in front of you what I think, mm-hmm. even if it hurts. And I got it mm-hmm. from the church. I got the concept that if you want to be like if you are a friend. You will truly say to that person what that person cannot see behind the back, what the person cannot see uh, in him, in her. So Mm -hmm. the David-Jonathan thing, it it got on me, all right, that that friendship, all right? Mm -hmm. And the pastor told me, and I I really heard that, that, you know, find a good friend, real friend that will tell you, you know, there's something, you know, speck in your eye, you know, something in the back. Watch your back. Somebody's watching your back. And I got this idea that the only thing to do that is to be straight, David. And if you, many people would say it's confrontational, but to me it's transparency, vulnerability. Like I'll tell Mm. you straight. Mm. And if I'm wrong, I'll just tell you I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. If you think that I did something, you just tell me. And I'll go back, very simple. I'll go back to principles. If I like connect it with the principle and I see I need to adjust, I'll adjust. But if it's not, then I'll tell you straight. Mm-hmm. No, I will not take that. You know, I respect what you said, but it's not. No, 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 it's me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think that's attractional to women who choose not to speak, who choose to, you know, kind of put the peace in order. Mm-hmm. You know, that women thing. Um uh, don't speak, don't say it, you know, that you might offend other people, right? right? So here's my take on that. There is no peace without war. Yeah. Hmm. You need to win the war of self-doubt that you can develop and establish friendship even if you're open enough. You need to win the mental war that when you speak your thoughts, people will dislike you. And if people dislike you, you are rejected. That's a mental war. I mean, somebody can dislike, somebody disapprove what I think, but it doesn't mean you rejected me, right? So that's a mental war. So that's what I'm saying. There is no peace without war. Mm. Mm. Amazing, amazing. And that is so attractive, so attractive to women in the Philippines that have lost their voice or never had their voice. And you're, you are... You're modeling what it looks like to have a strong voice that's rooted in values, not just rooted in anger or, you know, resentment or something of that nature kind of lashing out. It's rooted in a strong value system. Um, That's what I'm hearing you say. Yeah. And it's also something that I want to represent in terms of people from the church. Okay, um, you're, in, you're a former pastor, David. And normally, 
in a church, you don't speak. When you speak your mind, people don't approve of it. Like they tell you, if you have a relationship with Christ, this is supposed to be the thing. Like, I'll give an example. When somebody offended you, somebody hit you, um, we forgive 77 times 7. Am I correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. And it's a decision, right? And whenever you feel the, the pain, you just say, I choose to forgive. We were taught about it. But David, you and I know that even if we forgive, there's hurt. Am I correct? So, mm -hmm. do you dismiss the fact that it's hurting? Am I less of a Christian because I'm still hurting after I forgive? No, mm -hmm. because there's a season of healing. And normally, we don't take a look at that healing portion. Or because you have a relationship with God, you don't think about suicide. David, no, it's not true. It's not mm. true. We've got people who do meditations and they said that's a thing of the enemy. That's the thing. It's a real thing. So what do we do? So that's the kind of voice I want to share. But it doesn't mean that we're talking about it. I'm sharing about it. It means I don't believe in Christ. I do believe in Christ. Mm. I do. And I understood how he lived. I understood how he lived based on the scripture. Of course, I wasn't there when he lived, but I knew that Christ, Jesus, lived a kind of life, hmm. right? That he was with a sinner. He will speak of this. He will ask questions. I believe he is the greatest coach, by the way. So apart from the Beatitudes, all the powerful encounter of Jesus is about questions. So mm -hmm. uh, I read that in the Bible and I've seen, all right? So he would ask what do you want? Do you want to get healed? Come on, Jesus. People know that. But he asked, right? So there's a reason yeah. why Jesus asked. So um, that's the thing. I mean, I've seen Jesus as a very kind, beautiful God, full, full of grace, mercy. But I've seen Christ as very practical. I've seen uh -huh. Christ who would fight. I, I've seen Christ who see things true. And maybe the church don't want it. Maybe the church. Well, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm not a part of any church right now, David. That's the side thing, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. this is not something that you know. It's also acceptable. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they will, you know, people would accuse you of different things. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. They accuse you of you having this kind of spirits and all. But you know what? Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, I'm only accountable to the God I serve. Mm -hmm. Adette, you are a powerful woman and you are making a huge difference in hundreds, thousands of lives. And uh, it's an honor to get to meet you and connect with you. And um, if people want to learn more about what you do and how they could get involved, either just by watching your content and or even joining the certification program, what would be the best place for them to connect with you? Um, Facebook, I'm a Life Coach Philippines and Coach A. That's in Facebook. And then YouTube, I have Coach A as well. Coach A Coaching Community. I mean, you just type in Coach A. I think you'll find me. Um, of course, through you, I'm sure. All right. Yeah. So just, we'll, yeah. Life Coach Philippines. I'll, I'll be Life there. Coach Philippines on, the, on Facebook. And we'll put all of those links in the show notes. Of course, if you're listening on your phone, you can swipe up now and find all those links. Yeah. So, Adet, thank you so much for taking time to hang with me today. I, I really appreciate it. Thank you for the invitation, David. It's an honor. Thank you so much.